1979, uh, Dr. Rike Gerd Hammer was diagnosed with testicular cancer. The cancer diagnosis came at a very difficult time during Dr. Hammer's life because just a few months before he was diagnosed with cancer, Dr. Hammer's son Dirk died as a result of a tragic accident. Dr. Hammer was always a healthy man, he was never seriously ill. So he immediately wondered whether his cancer could be related to the emotional stress and the emotional pain that he was suffering over the loss of his son. At this time of his life, Dr. Hammer was head internist at a cancer clinic in Germany. So he was working with cancer patients and he started to talk to his patients. He wanted to find out if his patients, his cancer patient, had also experienced some emotional trauma before they got cancer. And he quickly learned that all of them, without exception, had suffered what we call in German New Medicine a conflict shock before they got cancer. But this, however, did not explain why Dr. Hammer's patients, and including himself, developed a very specific type of cancer. Why testicular cancer? Why breast cancer? Why colon cancer? Why lung cancer? And Dr. Hammer was determined to find out. And he had an ingenious idea. Based on the premise that all our bodily processes are controlled from our brain, Dr. Hammer obtained a brain scan of all his cancer patients. A brain scan, we have an example here, shows layers of the brain taken parallel to the base of the cranium. And Dr. Hammer compared the brain scan with his patient's medical records and their personal history. And he took particular attention to his patient's recent emotional trauma. And this is what Dr. Hammer found. Dr. Hammer found, and we're going to do this slowly, Dr. Hammer found that each cancer has its own area in the brain from where the cancer is controlled. And each cancer is linked to a very specific type of conflict shock that correlates psychologically and biologically to the same area in the brain that controls the cancer. So in other words, Dr. Hammer found a clear correlation between certain conflicts, how these conflicts manifest themselves on the organ level as cancer, and how all this is connected to the brain. So he found, for example, that lung cancer is always controlled from a very specific area in the brain stem, which is the oldest part of the brain, and that lung cancer is always linked to a death fright conflict. Gland on the breast cancer, so a, a, a cancer in the breast glands, on the other hand, is always controlled from a very specific area in the so-called cerebellum, which is just next to the brain stem, and gland on the breast cancer is always caused by, as Dr. Hammer calls it, a nest worry conflict. So uh, unexpected concern and worries about the well-being of a loved one. Introductal breast cancer, on the other hand, he found is always controlled from a very specific area in the so-called cerebrum. And introductal breast cancer is always caused, so he found, by a separation conflict. Well, animals, aren't they wonderful? Uh, animals experience these conflicts in real terms. For example, when they are separated from their mate, from their offspring, when they are attacked by an opponent, when they lose their nest or their territory, when they uh, suffer a threat of starvation or a death fright. While we humans developed over time a figurative way of thinking, so we can suffer these conflicts in a transposed sense. So we can experience such conflict, for example, territorial conflict, when we lose our home or our workplace. We can suffer a attack conflict when we are physically attacked, verbally attacked, or when our integrity is attacked. 
We can suffer a starvation conflict when we don't know how to provide for ourselves. And we can suffer a death fright conflict most often, and a typical death fright is a diagnosis shock. And Dr. Hanna found, or as we would say, since this conflict involves our entire organism, so the psyche, the brain, and the organ, and since we share these conflicts with all other species, we speak in German new medicine of biological conflicts rather than of psychological conflicts. Well, after Dr. Hammer has identified what type of conflict could work cause what type of cancer, he naturally looked at other so-called diseases. He looked at heart conditions, skin disorders, liver disorders, diabetes, arthritis, and so forth. But he also looked at uh, mood disorders like depression or mental disorders, as we call it, bipolar disorders. And Dr. Hammer found that this interplay, that this interaction between the psyche, the brain, and the organ applies to all of medicine and each patient's case. And Dr. Hammer called his findings the five biological laws of the new medicine. Dr. Hammer called them biological law because his discoveries reveal universal biological principles that apply to every living organism, to every species, and to every human being. Dr. Hammer calls his discoveries biological laws because these biological laws reveal that diseases are not, as we assumed, the result of a malfunctioning organism, but that, the, that diseases are instead meaningful biological processes which are comprehensible in the context of our evolution and how our organism developed over time. And the five biological laws also reveal that diseases are curable. Firmly tied into the science of embryology, Dr. Hammer uh, provides the scientific evidence that we are all born with the capability to heal our own diseases, that the healing of cancer and all other diseases is inherent in all of us. And this implies, my friends, that we do no longer have to, to fear diseases, that we do, do no longer have to panic when we get cancer. Because, as Dr. Hammer puts it so well, many of us will at one time or another experience a conflict and get cancer. But that is a normal part of life and not such a bad thing at all. Once one understands the principles of the five biological laws. And we're going to look into those laws now. Okay, the first biological law states that every disease originates from a conflict shock that catches us completely off guard. So this is already important information because such a conflict shock is an emotionally unexpected an, uh, emotional distress, an unexpected emotional distress for which we are not prepared and which we could not anticipate. And as such, this conflict shock differs greatly from everyday stress or emotional stress that we can foresee.